I want to show you a magic trick. We all know the power of sound, and more specifically, music in film. We've all turned off the sound of a horror movie and felt fear recede, and maybe you've even seen the demos where they show you famous scenes with and without music. But as a professional film composer, I know there's much more to this than these fairly surface level explorations. And today I want to give you an insight into just how deep this can go, and ultimately, what the work of being a composer for film and TV is really about. Typically, a film score starts as a collaboration between the director and the composer, and the tone, motivation, style, and purpose are all carefully and painstakingly crafted. Where the music enters, how it functions, and what perspective it takes, and what themes it handles are all decided upon during what's called the spotting session. In this experiment, we're going to take that process out of the equation and instead ask, how can we create context, meaning, and narrative using music? How much can you actually change the feeling and tone of a scene with different musical approaches? Is there more to scoring than just making scary music for a scary scene and uplifting music for a happy one? I have to admit that even though I've been doing this for more than 15 years, I was still surprised by the results of some of these experiments. And they each shine a light on a different aspect of the power that music can have in helping tell a story and hopefully show the amazing opportunities available if you harness the true potential of the score. I'm going to show you a short scene. This scene does not have any dialogue or sound effects, so when I add the music it'll be the only piece of sound information that is affecting the narrative. To remove an additional storytelling element, I also desaturated the footage so that the color grade does not affect your reaction. Okay, let's watch the scene without music. You probably noticed that, even without context, you invented a narrative in your head about who these characters are, what they're feeling, what is happening in the scene. You probably also came up with stories about what happened before the scene and what might come next. As an audience, and indeed as human beings, we are constantly searching for clues, patterns, and connections to piece together and create meaning and order in our world. A sensible narrative. Now I'm going to show you the scene a number of different times, and the only thing I'm going to change is the music that is used. Sometimes I made a slight edit to make the music fit, or I've chosen one specific point where I wanted the music to hit. Many of these, however, are simply what happened when I dropped the music in at random. I'm not going to feed you any information before showing you the clip, so that any ideas you might come up with will only be informed by what you see and hear. After each clip, we'll see what you thought and felt about it. And then I'll give you my take on what is happening and why I think it does or does not work. Okay, here's experiment number one. So, how did the story change now that music is added? Did you feel a difference in how you related to the images and characters? Did things on screen even look different? I think this track works great as a baseline as the music fits the pacing and tone of the images and action really well. 
it feels inherently right and doesn't play against the picture in any way. That said, it doesn't provide much in the way of tension. We have an entrance motivated by the change in Rose's facial expression. This is a common method to get into a scene, using a line or a change in facial expression to justify the appearance of music. The why of the change, Vanessa's arrival, is punctuated by the music beginning to travel with the action, rhythmically and with harmonic changes. To me, the music seems to belong to Rose and underscores her emotions, how she feels about the arrival of Vanessa. The tone seems to suggest nostalgia and melancholy. Perhaps these are old friends who have not seen each other for a long time, and perhaps left on bad terms. But again, there's no real tension suggested. Did you notice any difference about how their faces looked in contrast to the previous version? Did the pacing and energy feel different? I find the expressions are less soft, and the questioning look that Rose gives seems more about calculation than reverie. Instead of the music being motivated by Rose's change in expression or the appearance of Vanessa, it enters on the first frame, suggesting that something was already happening before this scene began. This music suggests a history. It asks, what is the past event that has led us to this current state of tension? The snare drum has a militaristic feel, and when we cut to Vanessa walking in slow motion, we begin to anticipate a battle. What came before this scene becomes important, perhaps a rivalry, something unresolved. The pace feels double time to the languid slow motion of Vanessa's gait, and shades her as aloof and almost arrogant. Here the music plays the situation. It's less about emotions and more about action, and very much about what is to come. And yet, being a tango, it suggests that these are not the highest of stakes. This is more of a curb your enthusiasm type of tension. It's shrugging and ironic. How did you feel when Vanessa appeared? Did your impression of her change? While the music here seems to suggest a horror movie, the images soften the tone and instead bring to mind a psychological thriller. All the nuance of who Vanessa is is lost on the cut to her walking. She, or at least her presence, is almost definitely bad. Rose's face belies not confusion, but disbelief and horror. She is a deer in the headlights, unable to act. Then something strange happens. A heartbeat-like pulse and a musical change on the cut to Vanessa. Maybe all is not what it seems? She's now shaded with a bit more subtlety. What I find interesting about this is that we have a shift in perspective. We're now playing to her emotions as she slowly becomes aware of Rose's presence. The two threads seem to join and interweave as the music shifts perspective once more, playing the situation and a build-up to what's next.
talk about a palate cleanser. Did you notice more sunlight and the reflections on the lake? How did the characters' expressions change for you? This one is a lot of fun. It's a little bit sexy, a bit cool, and still somewhat goofy. Now when Rose turns away, her face could be saying, Oh my god, she's so cool. I'm so embarrassed. A friend called this the Charlie's Angels cut, and I love that idea. It's the part of the comedy heist movie where the cool, reckless, loose cannon shows up to the dismay of the straight-laced character. I love the guitar slide that accompanies them as they turn toward one another, like a baseball being tossed from one actor to the other. This track is unedited. I only lined it up where I wanted it to start. And this proves again something that a producer once said to me. Take any music, lay it up against picture, and it will line up in at least three places. If you're ever stuck, this is a great way to start. It will suggest certain opportunities and will be even more instructive when it doesn't work, giving you a clear picture of what not to do. How did this one make you feel? Did you feel satisfied? Did you learn anything new about the characters or the situation? The music sounds fine and fits very well with the picture, and yet I feel it's very weak as a storytelling device. It matches the pace and fits in terms of tone and mood, but it just sits on top of the scene, lazy and kind of pointless. It doesn't create any tension. It provides the audience with no new information and it doesn't add any shade or color to the characters or the action feels static and lifeless. It doesn't change as the scene changes. This cue has one note, slight melancholy. While the music is tonally in the ballpark, the biggest offense it commits is by missing a bunch of opportunities to deepen our understanding of who these characters are, where they came from, what their fears and motivations are, and what might be going on in the scene. So how did this one strike you in terms of providing new information about the characters and situation? To me, this cue hits where the last cue misses. We have shade, color, nuance, and suggestion. A dark but ambiguous tone opens the shot and seems to be part of the landscape. This is the first time where place or setting seems to be important. Where Rose is, is part of the reason for her tension. This tone plays unchanging through the arrival of Vanessa, which suggests that she's not the most important thing going on. This is part of a bigger story. When Rose turns, a pulse begins, and we are asked to consider what that story is. It invites questions and suggests that this might only be a beginning. When Vanessa comes into focus, stops, and her expression changes, a rising string chord brings her more fully into the equation. There's a shift, and we're forced to consider her perspective. She feels more empathetic, multidimensional. She might be an ally, albeit an, an uneasy one. The chords continue and connect her and Rose together as they turn. This is not about one person's perspective anymore. It's about a bigger story that these two are in, and the music plays their realization. 
In that way, the music is less about their emotions and more about thoughts and ideas. Mostly, it's about the bigger story. The music seems to pull them both along towards some sort of inevitable destiny. Who or what perspective did you feel the music played here? Did it suggest something about time or a history? To me, this underlines the power of the human voice in scores. It immediately elevates things and makes them extra human. I really like how this cue completely ignores Vanessa's entrance. It's only on the cutback to Rose that the vocal enters, bringing all the attention and focus to her. To me, this strongly speaks to a memory, a memory possibly tragic that both her and Vanessa share. The scene now becomes about two people joined by a past event who will have to reconcile their shared experience. How did this one make you feel? Did it work for you the whole way through? Did anything not work? This is obviously the over-the-top version, what my friend referred to as the Spielberg cut. It's big, it's brash, it's unabashedly romantic. Notice how the music is perfectly matched to the pace in the first half. The cuts, Vanessa's footfalls, it all fits. When you want to make a statement that says, this is inevitable, this is destiny, it helps to have all the elements come together like clockwork. We are addicted to form and harmony, and it can create an almost religious experience giving us hope and faith. This was meant to be. Rose is in the now, and she's overwhelmed by her feelings. We feel that uneasy moment at the climax where a character must make the final decision, running to the airport gate to confront their fears and profess their love before it's too late. But that's not quite the story here, or so it seems. Vanessa's expression and Rose's confusion battle the music at the end, and it sort of seems to stall out, becoming a parody. Oh, it started out so well, you thought this was it, but it turns out, it's just another stumble. The music exits with a final sigh, oblivious to how off the mark it was.
There's a different kind of tension in this one. What did you think? Here, it's not about high stakes, and it's not overly emotional either. It feels like a Wes Anderson film, where characters and situations are stylized, formal elements. There's a blend of tone, a kind of melancholic irony, and it all feels like a bit of a nostalgic warm bath. It suggests summer loves and heartbreaks. This version demonstrates the power of assigning instruments to characters. When Vanessa approaches the camera and comes into focus, the melodica plays the theme and it really feels like the music belongs to her and helps define her even further. The piece and the scene end on an unresolved note, which is a storytelling device that screams next time on Drama at the Docks. Did you get a sense that this one and the ironic tango version could be cousins? They do play the scene in similar ways. Both start out with a kind of off-kilter staccato that seems to suggest that something was happening before the scene began. But this version peels off in a different direction with a sense of humor that the tango doesn't quite have. The dreamy vibraphone flourishes suggest a comedic David Lynchian universe. There's a bit of tension, but mostly there's a sense that something funny is about to happen. I feel like it says, these people tend not to make the best decisions. Watch what happens. Never has Rose's expression looked sillier than when we cut back and the bouncing, almost circus-like rhythm kicks in, seeming to underscore her racing and somewhat chaotic thoughts. The pace of the music now outstrips that of the images and sets up a dissonance. It pulls the scene along by the ear in a way no previous cue has, as if to say, come on, let's go, make a decision. This shows the power of using music to play against the pace of a scene to create a feeling of chaos, rushing, and time running out. Okay, this one plays in a very similar way to the previous cue, but in this case, the pacing is matched to the cuts and the movement of the scene. It feels less chaotic and is less about action and time compression and more about thoughts. When we cut to Rose, an ascending motif suggests her coming to a conclusion. Cutting back to Vanessa, we hear the same motif but from a slightly different vantage, and we feel her coming to a similar conclusion. Then a total change in mood, pacing and tone. This is the music reflecting a simultaneous decision that both have come to, and now there will be a reckoning. These experiments perfectly illustrate what it is I love about scoring to picture. It's that relationship between what's on screen and the music and the absolute magic that can transpire when those two elements begin to dance with one another. Sometimes it's harmonious and elegant, other times it's dissonant and creates a sense of discomfort in the viewer. Perspectives change, histories and emotional landscapes are suggested. Each is useful in the right context, and this is what filmmaking is all about, building meaning and guiding the narrative that emerges in the mind of the audience by employing subtle psychological cues that we might only be perceiving subconsciously. Music is an important and even critical part of that, 
and when done well, can enrich the experience in a way that no other medium can. Thanks for watching.